City life in Paris is exciting and très chic, but a slower pace can be found just a train ride away. Welcome to Little Known Travel, where we show you hidden gems and some of the world's best known locations. I'm Alexis Sita, thanks for joining us. Well, after living like a Parisian for a few days, tourists seeking countryside often visit Provence or Normandy, but the less considered region of Brittany offers idyllic countryside, a picturesque coastline, and some rocks made famous in history books and fairy tales. A three hour train ride headed northwest from Paris brings us to the beautiful countryside of Brittany, a region of France where several cultures converge. We stop in Saint Brieuc to meet author Charles Frankel a geologist who will provide his unique insight on our tour. Well, Brittany is uh, one out of about 25 regions of France, and it's the western tip of France, actually. And in the uh, old days, in the Middle Ages, and, and, and before that, it was a separate region, a separate state with its own duchess. Brittany today still holds on to its language and would like to hold on to as much independence as it can. They actually try to preserve that language. There are a lot of schools where, where they speak Breton as a foreign language or as one of their main languages. Uh, we have radio channels in Breton and TV shows in Breton language. The farther west you go out on the Brittany Peninsula, the more hardcore Bretons you meet. So we are headed to the pink granite coast, but you say it in French. Oh yeah, la côte, la côte de granit rose. Okay, that's, uh, you say it much better than I could. We're in uh, halfway between Perros Guirec and Plumanac, northern Brittany, basically facing uh, the British Isles way past the horizon uh, on the English Channel. And, and this has a remarkable coastline of, of granite, as you can see, that's uh, carved into boulders. Um, doesn't it remind you of any other place? Well, I was gonna say that it reminded me of something you would see in Joshua Tree Park in California, or something in the that's southwest. True. Yeah, exactly. It, you see typically granites being eroded that way in the desert or whatever, but it, the fact that it's on the coastline makes it uh, really picturesque. Great Britain is on the other side of the channel. Actually, if you go back to the Ice Ages about 10,000 years ago, the sea level was lower uh, and people could actually walk across the channel. There was no sea between Great Britain and Britain. There was oh. like a major river going by, so you still had to pass a river. But that's why there are so many similarities between the Breton people, the Celts from France, and the Celts from, from Great Britain, right. Scottish, Irish, etc. And they actually, they still get together and have music festivals, Celtic music festivals, and they can understand each other. Their dialects are so close. Day two of our travels through the Brittany region, and we are on our way due south to the city of Auré. Correct, yeah. Auré is on the Atlantic coast now, uh, and it's a medieval city, at least it started in the 1500s probably with attached to it a little harbor called Saint-Goustan, uh, which is set on a river, actually. And which is interesting there is, you'll see that this little tiny harbor of Saint-Goustan has a major connection with Franco-American relationships. Oh. So we're looking for number eight? Yeah, number eight uh, on this K should be right here. And the interesting uh, anecdote about this indeed is that uh, Benjamin Franklin landed here almost by mistake as he came across the Atlantic uh, seeking help from the King of France in 1776, uh, just after the Declaration of Independence. He uh, was heading for Nantes, which is the major harbor of Brittany, and contrary winds blew him over towards Auré, and instead of waiting for the winds to change, since he was in a hurry to meet the King of France, Louis XVI, uh, he went on a little rowboat and arrived in saint Gustave and landed in France in this tiny little harbor where he spent the night before he took a uh, carriage, a horse-drawn carriage, away to Paris the following day. 
Well, lucky for San Gustavo, though, because it really put them on the map. If it wasn't for the high winds, they Ab would just be another charming town in Brittany. <laughs> Absolutely. Past the rolling hills and charming ports, nearby Karnak brings us from pre-revolutionary history to a strange prehistoric monument. These have been famous for centuries and they date back to, again, it seems like 4,000 years before Christ. And there are thousands of them, because if you count, there are 12 rows that converge from west where we stand to east in that direction, perfectly lined up, 12 rows. And so that's about 3,000 or 4,000 stones. And the fun part is that perspective is you have them really lined up in a west to east direction, perfectly lined up uh, over half a mile. And they are larger and then they get smaller. Correct, correct. Here you have the taller ones and uh, like 10 feet, 12 feet tall. And as you proceed towards the east, they get lower and lower and they're only like two feet tall when you're at the farther end. So there's a sense of perspective that the artists or whoever they were, were, were trying to put into this. But there's probably a more even deeper explanation that we don't understand now, probably an astronomical alignment like at Stonehenge. Uh, and some astronomers I talked to have calculated all the angles and said it corresponds to the rising point of Venus 4,000 years before Christ or some other star, uh, Venus being a planet, or some other star. Uh, who knows? And what practical purpose then would that serve to have that information? Probably power, because if you're able to predict as a, as a tribe what's happening in the sky, you're in sync with the gods. I see. Back to modern civilization, Charles's wife Dominique joins us at the right time for a well-earned snack of creme glace. So we are in the town of Karnak. Right, so not only known for all its uh, uh, monuments dating back to the Stone Age, but also, look at this, uh, ice cream. Okay, but this is not just a regular ice cream place. It smells fabulous, but there's a reason why this is famous. Why? It has the highest number of different flavors ever in an ice cream shop. It's actually on the Guinness Book of Records with 171 different flavors. You name it. Look, look on the board. I love that Heineken they have. <laughs> Black Forest, apricot, lychee, rum, uh, red fruit. Martini, they've uh, got violet cherry flavor. Cherry plum, whiskey coke, uh, papaya. Uh, There's a tomato grapefruit. over there. Tomato, How about that? date, uh, rose, leek. Uh, and of Is course, there a leak, really? leak up there. Oh, Potatoes. Right. Oh, potato Carrot. Flavor. Truffle. Truffle wow. ice cream. All right, well, we have to have a flavor. We've got to try. But uh, I don't know if I'm going to go for leek or potato. It doesn't sound that good to me. I might have to just go with the... Uh, salted butter caramel. Yes. And maybe <laughs> some Nutella. We'll try that. What'd you get? Nutella. Ah, rum. Does it taste like rum? Outstandingly so. <laughs> Is there really rum in there? Probably not, it's probably just the flavoring. Or everybody would be walking crooked in the <laughs> streets of the Kanak. Yeah, can I try yours? Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh my gosh, it does taste like rum. The last stop on our journey is to the origins of an international legend. The area of Welgwat helped inspire some of history's greatest stories of bravery, romance, and mysticism. One would imagine that the uh, legends of the Round Table come from Great Britain, but actually they come from Lower Britain, from Brittany, right here in France, where a huge forest used to cover these lands in medieval times, and there are only a few remnants left of, of, of the big forest. Uh, one part is Welgoat, where we, we now stand, and in this legend, uh, uh, King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table and Merlin uh, basically are haunting these places, and they, a lot of places here bear their names. There's a grotto called the Artus Grotto nearby, which basically means King Arthur. Uh, it all took place actually here. These are some serious rocks of chaos. Actually, it's still granite, quite similar to what we saw on the coastline. Maybe a different composition, 
but basically a huge magma chamber of, uh, of crystalline rock underground, oh, hundreds of millions of years old. But what's fun is the legends. Yes, because they're, they're called the chaos rocks for a different reason. Yeah, they thought, they believe, of course, I mean, people in the older days thought that these were tossed by giants. That basically, giants were unhappy with the people of this land and actually went to the seashore and took the big boulders from the seashore and tossed them a hundred miles inland and they all landed here as a chaos. So in some legends, it's a giant that's unnamed. In other legends, it's Gargantua, who's the major giant in uh, medieval He's French history. He's a famous history. giant. He's a famous giant. <laughs> He's a famous World giant. World renowned giant. And then if you keep going down the chaos, you keep going down and you, you, this is the entrance to hell. So this is the Devil's Grotto, and there is a great legend associated with the Devil's Grotto, right? Sure, yeah, it's supposed to be the entrance to hell. Uh, and there are 99 inns on the way down to hell, inns. I and and Yeah, where you serve okay. wine. Actually, fairies serve you wine at each inn on your way down to hell. And if you get to hell sober, then you get eternal salvation. You go to heaven, I guess. Which but is, no wine. But no wine. There's no wine. <laughs> which might be much less fun. So. Yeah, hell sounds a lot more fun. So let's go. Let's check it out. <laughs> this is like the descent to hell. way to end a trip through the Brittany countryside is of course with a glass of red wine but that means that we fail the fairies test and we're going to hell. Oh well. Oh, what are you gonna do? Yeah. Right. Well thank you Dr. Charles Frankel for all of your information. My pleasure. Alexa. And thank you for joining us on Little Known Travel. We'll see you next time. Santé. Santé.